hung, the more <laughs> as I got drunker and drunker, the anointing of heaven just kept growing. And I just felt like, wow, God, this is so powerful. And um, great man of God, wonderful, wonderful word he gave. And we're going to enact it in matter of prayer, fasting, and forgiveness. You remember that? You remember those three words? And um, I just want to give a shout out also to John and Mary Lawrence. Um, you know, we've had 32 people in this church, in the healing ministry, have listened to over 200 hours. I know that's a lot of listening. Required and taken tests on healing. 200 hours. You try to do 200 hours. It's taken six, seven months or something like that. Five. And um, I'm going through these tastes myself. They're very, they're very well done by, by Sandra Kennedy. And Sandra Kennedy um, actually has a healing explosion coming up. I think it's the third week of August, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Fourth week of August, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We got, uh, it's just amazing how many people have gone down have already and another like 30-some people going down again, and, which blesses me because we're raising up Holy Ghost men and women of God to minister healing. And our goal is to have these teams under her auspices. We're going to be rolling this out the end of August, oh, September, first, uh, third, second week of September. And they're going to actually come down and we're going to become an official Sandra Kennedy healing clinic. And they have rules, but they're full of the Word of God. It's the Word of God that gets in you. And these people have been in the 200 hours. I mean, it is a lot of information, but it goes over and over and over. But the healings they have, Brother Hagen said that her healing clinic was the best in the nation. She put like number one in the country. And people come from all over the world to her clinics. And people get healed of everything under the sun. Everything, you name it, they've been healed. And just the, the level of faith and the expectation, like you get there, there's no question you're getting healed. That's just the way it is. Because the Word is the power. And the Word says that you can have it. And so we set up the conditions and the provisos and the exceptions and all the other things. But uh, so we're looking to establish eventually a healing clinic here on a weekly basis and have our, uh, and it gets, I won't get into the length and breadth of it, but there's a lot involved. It actually would take a full-time person to make it happen. But I want this house to be a place of healing where if you've got sickness or disease, you can come here to this house and God will minister you the Word of God and that sickness and disease will leave you. And, uh, but you learn through it that sometimes we become a little perhaps too quick to run to the healing line and get prayed for when really we need the Word of God in us first to have the faith. Because what happens is if you get prayed and prayed for, then nothing happens. Then the more you get prayed for and the more nothing happens, you fight discouragement like, God, why are you not healing me? When really God's saying, no, it's a level of faith you need to have in order for me to give what I want to give you. Does that make sense? So it's just a powerful tool that we go back to the basics of the Word of God and um, so that's being launched in Jesus' name. And I want to thank Xiaomei because she, she, she started this whole thing. And uh, it was always in my heart to have a healing center, to have the church be a, 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 a healing center. And we want to make it not just for our church, it's just be a community thing. You know, as a matter of fact, well, we've been so trained. I mean, it is intense training. It's like the Marine Corps. I'm very serious about what you can and cannot do. That's over and over and over again. 200 hours. When was the last time you sat for 200 hours listening? You've got to wrap your head around it. And, um, but they have healing teams that go three, usually, sometimes four. And, they, and then Dr. Sandra Kennedy, they do 16 hospitals. They've been doing this like for 25 years. So her, her legacy is pretty big. And they send teams out. And hospitals know that they, because they set the protocol and they never go outside the boundaries. That's why training is key. You can't go wigging off, splashing on everybody, screaming out devils and shundalying through the hall. You can be thrown out. And 
So we can't do that. We have to be stealth. But they have ministers that go to these hospitals. They call them an ER. We got this one's dead. But call them. Well, just call the healing team. Healing team shows up. And they're just all kinds of cases. They're just dead, flatlined. They get there, resurrected. Amen. They have healings on people just on the deathbeds, all kinds of illnesses going into the hospitals. And if you want to be part of the team, you can be as long as you go through 200 hours. Uh, but we're going to do the same schooling. And you can do it. It takes about half a year. Amen? Amen. And so um, and they've been holding off on us because they get calls themselves. We have a relative here. Can you go see them? Now, we're going to limit it to a certain amount of space because Atlanta is very big. You could, you could spend two hours going one way. Then well, we went to the camp two hours one way, two hours back. But I'm excited about this. Are you excited? Yes. I mean, just think, I mean, glory to God. People will be going out to this house to minister the power of the Word of God and healing. We've been talking about this for months and months and months. We've not shared the congregation, but it's been boiling in us. And, but it's about ready to, Mount, Mount Vesuvius is about ready to erupt. In Jesus' name, get ready, get ready. It's coming. Amen. And uh, sorry, we need to get also, we can work on a deliverance thing. We can work on just a different school set up. We already have it, right? But we can develop it in Jesus' name. Turn me your Bible to 1 John 2. And I just, um, you know, we've been talking about how to grow up in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wants us to be like him. Amen. And so, um, I love this sound. Chris Best, are you up there? Who's up there? Nobody. <laughs> what now? <laughs> it's, just, it's so modern, it's on autopilot. <laughs> Verse 20. It says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. He's talking about you. Say this, I, I have, an have an anointing from the Holy One, the Holy One and I know, all things. I know all things. Now in verse 27 it says, But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. Father, make alive the word on the anointing of the Holy Ghost and what we have through the anointing. In the name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible talks about the anointing that we have within us. We have an anointing within us, the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is his first, is, how should I put this? His last name is Christ, but it's not his last name. It's another name for who he is. Christ means the anointed one with the anointing, with the anointing. The anointed one with the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. And the scripture lets us know that we've been given that same anointing that Jesus Christ has. That, the, that if Christ is in you, then Christ has the anointing. Then the anointing is within you. That's why it says the anointing, you, you, through the anointing in you, you can know all things. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean you know everything and there is no in the word. But, you, but the anointing of God is not just on ministers, it's not just on a prophet, it's not just on a pastor, it's not just on a, an apostle, but the anointing is on every believer. Yeah. And the anointing is within you. And we want to talk about this because what we do, we tend to relegate anointing to certain people or certain events, but I want to highlight the reality of this, that the anointing of God, if Christ is within you, Christ means His word, Christ the Messiah means the anointed one with the anointing. I mean, the anointed one with the anointing lives on the inside of you. The anointed one with the anointing, Christ, lives on the inside of you. And the anointing brings with it the power and reality of who we are in Him. It takes an anointing to capture the truth of the word and make it come alive on the inside of you. We're not dealing with 
just doctrines. Well, here's the doctrine of this and doctrine of that. I know we call it doctrine. Doctrine is a word for teaching. But it's more than just a teaching. It's reality. And until we embrace reality, and it takes the Holy Ghost to make it real, but it takes the anointing. The anointing will allow you to know things you don't know in your noggin. And the whole thing about the healing ministry, we were just talking about this, how the, to go over the word over and over and over and over and over, what happens is the anointing kicks in. It's like the anointing is the enforcer of the word of God, the anointing. And it becomes like alive. But we've got to make much of the anointing of God because the anointing of God is the power of God. If you think about Jesus, when he was in this earth, he stripped himself of all heavenly privileges. You know what he had to deal with? The same issues you and I. He had to deal with loneliness, frustration, challenges, temptation. I mean, people trying to kill him. He had to deal with things that a lot of us don't deal with. When was the last time you got thrown out of the church and run off and try to kill you? Now, when I go to Uganda, that's a real deal. That's a real deal. I mean, they got so much security there, like 130 security people. And they're constantly, everyone goes through a scanner, and they find all kinds of stuff. When I was there, there was a guy with a bottle of acid, and he was coming up to the preacher, but they, but they caught him. So it's a real deal over there because people are trying to take out the preachers. And in Jesus' name, we don't know what's going to happen in America as we keep descending into the abyss. But, I <laughs> but I'm believing God for a move of God in America that's going to change it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But um, when Paul was preaching on Mars Hill in Athens, he said, in him we live and move and have our being. He was just talking some truths to try to connect with the, with, the, with, the, uh, with, the, with the heathen. And he talked about the fact that, um, that he can come to every person. He can come to every one of us. We're the only religion on earth. Well, that was something that T.L. Osborne said. We're the only religion on earth that tells the believers, that we have God living on the inside of us. The, the Muslims don't teach that. Buddhists don't teach that. Hindus don't teach that. But we teach that God lives on the inside of you, that the reality of God's Spirit is inside of you, and He brings with Him an anointing. Everybody say anointing. anointing. Now, Jesus was armed with only two things. With everything He fought, He was armed with the Word of God, and he is armed with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He was given the exact same tools you and I have. We have the Word of God, and we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When he went to uh, his own hometown, the Bible says on Sabbath, he took the scroll. He found the place where it was written, Isaiah 61, where he talked about the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. The anointing is the power of God. The anointing, he said, he has anointed me to preach this gospel. And then he goes on to say, when he, when, he, when, he, when he quotes all of Isaiah 61, and he says, today this is fulfilled in your hearing. Because really what he's saying, he's flipping through the book, and he finds Isaiah 61, and he says, guess what? Isaiah 61 is talking about me. And I'm here right now. And the same things that were shared in here, they can happen right now because I am the anointing. I have the anointing on me. I have the word, I have the anointing. And with the word and the anointing, you can, I tell you what, the, the reality that Jesus Christ overcame every work of hell through the word and the anointing, you and I have been given the same tools. We've been given the word of God and we've been given the anointing of God. And the Bible says you can get to know things. You can know these things. You can know it by the anointing of God. That anointing you can use as a tester. You can test things. Is there an anointing on this? Or is it just someone just talking? Or when you have a gift of God in operation, is that a true gift? Or is that a familiar spirit being operated in? And do I need to back off? And I'll tell you what, there's some out there. 
And I remember a guy, we were there, I was at a conference. And this guy was preaching. There was a preacher after preacher. Then the last preacher was a big conference, several thousand people. He said, um, and I won't say who he is. I'll just say what he did. But he said, I want to pray for everybody at the end of his whole teaching. And I just felt, I don't feel good about this guy on the inside. I don't feel good about him. I'm not letting him have him pray for me. So I called Bank Akamola, who knows everything. Bank is my Nigerian brother. I said, Bank, this so-and-so was preaching. He said, no, 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 don't let him lay hands on you. No, no, he didn't. He said, no, that guy. And then he went on to tell me what that guy had done. How he said, I know he was in Brazil. And he went into, got into a relationship with a woman. And because it's in Brazil, no one thinks he'll know about it. So then he flies back to the States. The inner circle people know. How many know this? The spiritual circles are small. I promise you, you know this person, they know this one, this one. I'm praying word travels. He said, no, he's been, he was sleeping with, a, with another woman. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. I had another time, a man was a great ministry. He's on the front row. The very first miracle he did, a woman had a big, like, bloated stomach through tumors, whatever. He prayed for it, and the tumor disappeared like that. It just went whoosh. Well, then there was a healing line, and everybody rushed to the healing line. My dad was with me. He said, I'm going to get prayed for. I said, Dad, wait a minute. I don't feel good about this guy. There's something not right. What was telling me that? The anointing on the inside of me. The Spirit of God. He just said, you will know things by the anointing. The, the anointing. The, it's the Holy Spirit's power to tell you, uh-uh. It's like a test. It's like a test. It's like a litmus test. Well, I held my dad back. He didn't go down. About a year later, I happened to ask Brother Norval about this person. I said, I felt checked about letting my dad get prayed for. Was I right? She said, oh, yeah, he was right. Did you see the organ player? I said, yeah. He was in a homosexual relationship with the organ player. Now, the guys like this don't stay on the front stage very long because Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus will expose it and deal with it. But the, why am I saying this? Because the anointing, you have the anointing within you to tell you what you need to know. If you'll tap into the Holy Ghost and tap into the Word of God, you can know things by the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, the, and let me just talk about this because we live in a very different age where everyone gets to listen to everybody. You get on the internet, and you can scroll through YouTube channel or whatever, Facebooks, and you can start talking, listening to every person under God's green earth. Be careful. That's all I'm going to tell you. You better be careful. You cannot, I remember we had a neighbor, a next door neighbor, and a sweet lady, charismatic, she would attend every and any conference in the city. I'm going to this conference. And I, I'll go to other states to go to another conference. She was in many, many streams. All kinds of streams. And I remember she was trying to get this. She was dating, and this guy was, they looked like they're going to get serious. She was an older lady. She looks like this guy was going to, that looks like it was going to work out. And I said, well, let's pray. So she said, let me pray. And her prayer was like all over the map. A little bit of faith. There's some prophetic things in there. There was this. There was that. It was like, I finally stopped. I said, man, that was the most confused prayer I've ever heard in my life. You, you're asking God for something, and then you're letting a caveat over here. And I said, and really I couldn't address it too much. I just told my wife, I said, you know what that's a product of? Drinking from multiple streams. You start getting confused. And then there are people out there, not only different streams, but absolutely flaky. Flakes McGee. And, but people, if you're young in God, you just think, well, he says he's a pastor. He looks like he's got a cool, you know, I remember this one person. Remember this person? I mean, I'm sitting there, Jesus. 
I mean, it just grieves me. People, they move to another state and, and on Facebook, and now they're watching this preacher. I go online, see this preacher. Let's see if he had dreads down to here. He was a cool preacher. I said, listen to him. I said, this guy is completely new age. He is new age. New age, he has all the nomenclature. He has all the verbiage. It sounds pretty good, but it's not biblically based. I said, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And so I try to tell these people, but you get nowhere. No, this is the new foundation of our faith. This person is great. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, this is, this is just great. This person is great. I said, how can this happen? Because people don't understand about the anointing. If you, if you lose, let me tell you what, you lose the touch of God. You lose the presence of the Holy Ghost. Then you're fodder for a lot of deception. And the devils are out there deceiving people every day. Especially in churches. We can sometimes be so gullible to everything. And we can make up our mind. You know what? I'm not going to be gullible. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be hoodwinked by demonic forces led down paths that Jesus is not taking me down. Amen? Amen. So this anointing, Jesus was armed with the anointing. He was armed with the word. You and I are armed with the anointing and with the word. John 1, 2, 20 and 27 is simply saying the anointing abides within you. That means you've got the power of the Holy Ghost to unlock the Word of God on the inside of you. This Word is very alive and is real, and you can put it to work, and we need to understand what it is we need to be pushing. We need to be first pushing the reality that Christ is in me, the hope of glory. That anointing is on the inside of me. If any man be in Christ, everybody say in Christ. If any man be in Christ, we could do a whole lesson on that. First, several lessons. What does it mean to be in Christ? To be in Christ. To be in Christ. If any man is in Christ, if any man's in the anointing, you've got to get over into the anointing of God. And you've got to work out this new creature. It comes out through the anointing of God. It's a spiritual thing. It's not a mental thing. Just join the church. I'm a member of the church. No, 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 no. This is a, this is a deeper reality to, to it. We are in Christ. We are in the anointing. And we must have that anointing to get the word to come alive to us. But it can come alive to us. Is everybody still out there? Yes. No one's left yet, have they? And so Jesus had the word and the anointing, and, and he operated in power because of it. And so we got to learn how to stay in the anointing. But it says something about this. There's, there's, a, there's a part we play, and the part is our faith. Your faith can put you over into the anointing. Your faith can take you into the anointing. It says in Philemon 6, it says that we would acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Faith will bring it. Let's just read that, Philemon 6. So where's Philemon? Philemon, if you go to the book of Hebrews, that's a good place to start and go left. Or if you go all the way to Revelation, go left. Pass right through Hebrews. The very first book after Hebrews is Philemon. It says here, it says that the sharing of your faith may become effective. How is it going to be effective? By the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is in the anointing. God says there's a word in here, in this word, that you can begin to acknowledge the word and it will make your faith effective. What does it mean to acknowledge your word? The, one of the greatest ways to know how to acknowledge the word is to declare what God's word says about you. You acknowledge the word of God. The anointing will make it real. The anointing will make it real. You know, there's certain scriptures start to explode in you. Like one of my favorites is that you are of God. Little children. And have overcome them. First John 4, 4. You are of God. If any man is a new creature, if you're born of God, you are of God. I am of God. I like to say it a lot. I am of God. I am of God. I am of God. 
My spirit man is of God, meaning that my spirit man is born of God. I am from God. My spirit man, I am of God, and God is my father, and I am his son, and I am a son of my father who is God. The acknowledgement of that truth, speaking it out, I tell you what, the anointing starts kicking in. And all of a sudden you go like this, I'm of God. I'm a child of God. What time is it? I'm of God. It's like that, but the more that you get into it, even in your prayer life and in your time alone with God and going through the I'm of God, all of a sudden things start kicking in. And the Holy Ghost, it's the anointing of God that will begin to make that thing begin to burn. Where it's no longer just a doctrine that God lives in me, but it becomes a reality. There's a shift, and it's the anointing that does it. It's that you have an anointing. No one needs to teach you these things. The, 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 uh, First John says, you have an anointing. that was, Now, he's not saying you don't need teachers. We need teachers. But ultimately, the anointing within you will make alive that word in your spirit. It'll become alive. And we got to get there by the acknowledging of every good thing. Who does the acknowledging? I've got to do it. You've got to do it. I've got to acknowledge. I've got to acknowledge what God says about me. I've got to acknowledge that I'm a child of God. I am a child of God. When the devil tries to beat you up and you're getting down there, getting in the, in the, in the fighting discouragement, one of the greatest things to, is, to, is to rise up and say, no, you know what? I'm going to affirm, I'm going to affirm some things that God says about me. Affirm, this is, this is really big, 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 big. We can talk about redemption. You can talk about doctrines. As soon as we get doctrines, sometimes Bible school can be dangerous because we learn the, quote, correct doctrines. But it's not the doctrines. It's the reality of that doctrine. It's got to get on the inside of you. Otherwise, it doesn't do much good. Amen. It's got to become alive to you. But you've got to acknowledge it. What's one of the greatest ways you, to, to exercise your faith in the truth of the Word of God is to acknowledge it. Everybody say acknowledge it. Acknowledge. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta say what God says about you. You gotta say it. Yes. Speak it out. Yes. What you have. Yes. I'm talking about the anointing to make it alive and make it real. The anointing is the enforcer of the word. It puts it past just doctrine into reality. Sometimes I don't like the word do what doctrine. I know we need the doctrine, it's our, it's our goalpost, but it has to be more than doctrine. It's got to be the reality on the inside of you. On the inside of you. That's what we talk about in healing. Healing, it's got to be a place where people treat healing like going to get a... Uh, what's that drive-in thing? Dr sonic. Gonna get a Sonic burger and a Sonic... You know, I want I want a burger, and uh, let me see here what you what you got going on here. I'll take a lime, a lime. <laughs> so they got the lime. I always get their lime. I always put lime and whatever. You can put all kind of stuff and everything. I mix it up. I don't know why that one broke over there. It was I kind of missed that Sonic. It was to get my nice hot dog <laughs> with everything on it. You know what I'm talking about? I used to. I used to. I used to pull it, pull in there and get my. For some reason, I always draw the, drawn to the lime stuff. And so, but you call up there, and pretty soon they come walking up there. There it is. Here you go. Okay, thank you. And we can't get that healing that way. Amen. You got it. Or some of the things of God, it has to be. I've got to say, God, I've got to keep acknowledging what you said about me on a persistent basis because the anointing starts kicking in. It does kick in. The anointing does kick in because he's in you. Jesus is the anointing. It's, you know, it's almost like the gun is there, the bullets are there, and your hand's on the trigger, but there's no power till you pull it. It's the acknowledging that begins to, poof, poof, begins to release what really is in you. But if you don't release it, it doesn't do much. Is it true? Everybody say the anointing. So we got to get over this thing where... Uh, um, it's the anointing of God 
And God put, that puts us over us, but it's the word and the anointing. The word and the anointing, because he's talking about knowing things in the word and the anointing. And he said, it's in you. Say, it's in me. It's in me. Say, the anointing, the anointing is, in is in me. Because Christ, because Christ is, in me. is in me. We gotta affirm these things. We gotta acknowledge these things. We can't just sit there right around your head. No, no, it's gotta be a part of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. And so um, the, the key is acknowledgement. Everybody say acknowledge. acknowledge. If you to remember one word of anything I say today, think about the anointment, think about the acknowledgement. Because the Holy Ghost works with what you provide Him. Amen. And there's something about the reality, what He can do. If you show Him some faith, when you, acknowledge, when you speak out that which He says, even though you don't feel it, that's part of your faith being an acting on, but you're acting out on your faith, then God's anointing. God's anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, this is like, it sounds simple, but when you kick into it, it's profound. That's why the Word is like an ocean. People say, well, no, the Word, I, or, I already know the Word, or I've been, through, I've been through that class, or no, no, I know that. What? The Word's bigger than the ocean. Amen. There's no way you can get through all the ocean. There's no way you can process all. I mean, we'll just be, you'll be learning this word throughout eternity. Yeah. Tr no, truly, if you think about the infinity of the word of God. And so we've got to understand the anointing of God. And the anointing of God basically enforces the word, like I said. Hallelujah. And so we've got to get this down inside of us. And I'll tell you what, it's the simple truths that put you over. Will you begin to say out of your own mouth that God, I'm your son. I'm a child of God. I love to use it in prayer. I love to use it when I'm going for the throne, I'm asking God, I just go through who I am, that I'm of God, that I'm a child of God, and God, you are my father. And Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is Son of God. I believe the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me. I believe that you are my father, and I'm your son. I believe it. I believe these things, Father. And because I'm building up my faith for the prayer I'm going to ask. Does that make sense? I want to get over there in the, in the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so the anointing of God will say to you, this can become real. Like let's talk about prosperity. I was raised, I thank God for the word of faith. The word of faith blasted me out of so much dumb religion. My parents were missionaries, and there's a st if you go with the evangelical missionary, there's a, like a, it's almost like a, a way of thinking that you're sacrificing, you left everything to follow Jesus. Therefore, you can't have much. Does that make sense? Because you're following Jesus. It's just like a, it's like a predisposition, uh, like a mindset. And when I got over into the word of faith saying, oh, God wants to prosper you. I know there are overages on this and there's overage on that. But I'll tell you what, it's God wants to prosper me, that I can make money. It's okay to make money. It's okay. But I had to be broken free that God wants to prosper me. God wants to prosper me. God wants to see me rich. God wants to see me blessed. God wants me to have good things. God, that's what God wants for me. He who knew no, I mean, he who was rich became poor, that I through his poverty might be made rich. Are you serious? But that had to be blasted off me. And what's so funny is if you're in sales, the whole thing is to be motivation is money. In fact, I would take a test and I would never be, they said, you're low on the motivation of money. You know, because salespeople, your motivation is money. I said, well, by that time I was making money, I said, well, my, my heart is for God and for what I can give for Him. So I want to make the money, but my, I'm not, the money is not my God. But I begin to, br I tell you what, you know what, you set your own limits. I, I, I found that when I let the unbelief get off me, I could, I would earn more. I would expect more. Does that make sense? And I'd, no, no, God wants to bless me. God wants to bless me. God wants to prosper me. God wants to break me out of poverty and lack. There's no problem with God on how I prosper in Jesus' name. Does that make sense? 
And so I had to blast that out. I, for me, it was a personal thing of coming out. Not coming out of the closet, coming out of... <laughs> coming, no, coming, coming out of a lack, a, a, a lack mentality. Does that make sense? A lack mentality. And so I remember when coming into the church, I'm in sales. I've got ungodly people on my team. Most of them are Jewish because they're after the money. I mean, their parents were well off, and they said, listen, we're going to put you through this because you'll learn sales. But I lived in a world where people always believed for the prosperity, believed it, believed it, and were doing it and setting goals. And I mean, their faith was working. And I came to church. It was like I came to a complete stop. <laughs> And people had all these reasons and all this. And I told my pastor, I said, the world out there has got this figured out. In the church, we embalm ourselves with, with false doctrine and unbelief and doubt. And I don't care. If you're in the ministry, believe God for big things. Amen. Call in the money. Amen. God wants to prosper you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I know people, there's balances at all, and I realize it, but... I had a preacher, a famous preacher, if I mention his name, he was preached. He got in my car. He said, isn't this overdoing it? I said, I, you know, I didn't even think about it. What? Isn't this overdoing it? For me, it's fine. I mean, is it for you? I mean, I'm fine with it. I mean, do you have a problem with it? But he was putting me, he felt like, no, 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 this is, this is beyond what you should be doing. Where is whatever. And really, I don't care. If it like, gets from A to B, I'm not into it. I could drive, you know, I might show up with a love truck one day just to show everybody I can, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Amen? Actually, I like to drive an old Land Rover, one of the, you know, the old Defenders. I like to get them fixed up out of Tipton, Georgia. They remake them there. Do you know that? And just give me an old, eh. yeah, you got a new one. <laughs> That's just because I want to take back to my Africa days. But uh. so anyway, my point being, the anointing of God with the Word of God makes the, it, it's, it's like you become, he says you have the anointing. Here's what the scripture said in 1 John. Everyone has this anointing. There's nobody without it. You got the anointing. And you have the Word. I need to exercise my faith to tap into that anointing. I need to acknowledge that I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I tell people, if you're fighting a, a sordid past, you're fighting things that, and we have people come from all kinds of backgrounds. If you're fighting these things, I tell you what I tell people. In fact, if you are fighting for your life, for sickness, and you're fighting, you come out of a, a, a tough style, a lifestyle, you need to focus on righteousness and that is to get on the inside of you. You need to constantly acknowledge it, acknowledge it, receive no condemnation that I have been, listen, I have been made the righteousness of God, that I have right standing with Almighty God, that every sin is under the blood, that I have zero condemnation because I am in Christ, I'm in that anointing. And I tell you, when that becomes in you more and more, I am, as, I am as pure as Christ is pure. I am as holy as Christ is holy. I am as good as God is good, that God has given that to me as a gift. I didn't earn it. I received it. And let me tell you this. There is one thing to say it, but it's nothing to become a down on the inside. It becomes a reality in the name of Jesus. Because all of a sudden, the more righteous you become, the less timid you become, the less self-effacing you become, the less having poor self-esteem that begins to lift off you because you affirm, you acknowledge, and the anointing of God will make it real that you've been made right with Almighty God as though you had never sinned. As though you were pure, because you are. That I've been made righteous before God. And I tell you, it's like you don't allow your mind or your words 
to contradict what God says. Now listen to me. You want to realize, listen, I'm, in Christ. I'm anointed. You can say, I'm anointed. You can say, who do you think you are? Back down. No, no, no. I'm anointed. You tell that to some religious people, they get upset. I'm righteous. I have right standing with Almighty God. I can go to God anytime I want. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I think you're full of pride. No, no, no. I'm not full of pride. I'm just saying what God says. I'm saying who God says that I am. I have to acknowledge every good thing that's in Christ Jesus. And there's a whole lot of good stuff. That means I got a, there's a lot to acknowledge. I need to spend my life acknowledging. And when you mess up, you repent before God. Don't keep crashing on through rationalizing. You make it right before God. You repent. You apply the blood. But then you go back to what God says. Listen, if you are faith, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And I'll tell you what, this is a powerful way of living. It's almost like Jesus set it up so we could walk like him on the earth. That's, that's really what he did. He said, I showed you how you could live. Because you have the same tools that I had. I had the word and I had the anointing. And we just read the anointing is within you. Say the anointing of God anointing is, within me. is within me. I'm telling you, that's a big thing. And listen, that, that, the, that the anointing of God on the inside of you, the spirit of God, that's the manifestation's power, will show you what that word is and make it alive to you. Hallelujah. When you get to see how that changes your life, you'll find that's the most important thing I can do in my life. Is I'm telling you this. Stay under the anointing. Stay with the anointing. Protect the anointing. Let the anointing open the word to you. And there's no limit to how far you can go in the spirit. No limit. No limit. And don't hang around religious people. Love them, but pass them by. My toughest time is in my, my gatherings. I love my family, but they don't, they think I'm crazy. They think I'm too radical. They think I go to Rodney Howard Brown, so it puts me over the edge. And, uh, but all he ever talks about is the anointing and the reality of God's anointing. That, that, his whole message is tap into this anointing if you make a big deal about it and you make it a big deal in your life, God will make a big deal about you in Jesus' name. Because it's the presence of God that puts us over, folks. It's not the, quote, doctrines. It's the reality of the word in your heart will bring the blessing of God to you. And... Life doesn't have to be one long series of frustrations, defeats, and brokenness, and heartache, and sorrow. Amen. We can fight that, but Jesus pushed through that. Everybody said, I have the anointing because I have Christ. I am in Christ. Therefore, I'm in the anointing. I'm in the anointing. I feel the anointing right now by saying that. I'm in the anointing. And the anointing will bring about the reality of the word in my life. I'm going to acknowledge the fact. That there's so much I can know. We'll get into this a little bit later. There are lots to acknowledge that I'm in Christ. And Christ is in me. It's going to get past our head into here. Father, I thank you for the reality of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you that we're in him. We're in you, Jesus. Therefore, we're in your anointing because you are the anointing. Christ is the anointing. We are in the anointing. We don't need men to teach us in one sense because the anointing is within us, and you will show us all things. In fact, we'll know all things. 
We can know everything there is about you, God, through the anointing of God. So we want to guard the anointing. We want to fill our hearts with the reality of your word. In Jesus' mighty name. And acknowledge every good thing that's in Christ Jesus. Every good thing. Every good thing. Every good thing. The devil has so much bad to give us, but God has only good to give us. There's so much good things that God has given us. So many good things. Good things. Good things, good things, good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you that you are the anointing and you live within us. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm just picking up that God would say that people here, you've got some, how can I put this? You're going through a tough time. You've got some, you've got needs in your life. You have needs in your life. You've got a lot of arrows in your f shield of faith. That shield of faith is getting a little heavy. But God wants you to know that he's got your back. He's going to help you. Even tonight, I just feel like God's got something special for you tonight. 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 I like what my wife said earlier, that God's concerned. He knows all about our work schedule. He knows about your traveling. He knows about your children. He knows about your finances. He knows about the challenges. He knows it all. But God gets, lives in the faith realm. We've got to get over into the faith realm with him. That's where the answers come. Hallelujah. That's why the word of God is so important. We've got to get it in us. We've got to build our hearts for the, with the word of God, the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, Harry, come over here. I know you're on my staff. I just feel led to pray for you. I tell you this, Harry. This season's going to pass. And you're in this place. You say, Lord, I'm wondering about this and I'm wondering about that. But I'm looking to you. But God hears your cry. But here, let me tell you what. You're going to raise your hands. And in Jesus' name, we're going to make some proclamations about your family. Are you ready? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just say this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I believe that the Word of God is alive. It's full of power. And I release it. I release it from my heart and from my mouth. And in Jesus' name, I speak prosperity over my home. That I'm blessed in my house. And my wife is delivered and healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I am strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And God's making a way for me. Even though it may look like a wilderness. He's going to make it a highway for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Now say it a little louder. Say in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for your breakthrough. For your breakthrough. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, do what you, as we have corporate anointing here and corporate faith. 
in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. That God's going to cause things to turn. And God's going to move for you in your behalf. You're going to see things happen. And you're not going around in a circle, but you're going in a straight path. And God's going to lead you and direct you. And your best days are still ahead of you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you. In Jesus' name, it's your breakout year. It's your breakout year. It's your breakout year. I speak it over you. Breakout for the Torres family. Breakout in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just feel led to do that for him. But let me say this. The acknowledgement of the word of God over your life and praying that word over your life. Uh, listen to me. You put yourself in the zone of the anointing. The anointing shows up when we get on the word of God. The anointing lifts where there's doubt and unbelief. The anointing lifts where there's fear. The anointing lifts where there's all you, where you do it on your strength. But the anointing comes on the word. It comes to enforce the word. You put the word out there, the anointing will show up. Because God's spirit will confirm his word. Because he gave you the anointing. It's on the inside of you. But you got to stir it up. Let me tell you this. I don't care if the devil backs you in the corner in life. There's a wall on the left, wall on the right. You feel like you're in a corner and he's coming at you. Where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? I tell you, the faith of God. Let me tell you. The anointing of God and the faith will blow a hole through the back wall. You will never get squashed by the devil. Never. In Jesus' name. Never. Never. You run confusion out of your life. Well, I'm just sitting there. We know that we're, if, you, if, if you sit there, contemplate your life. Well, I'm just, I'm just kind of getting confused. And you, no, 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 no. You're doing it wrong. No, no, no. You're get, listen, listen, listen. You're, you're being taken advantage of right there. Well, well what do I do? I, I'm going to tell you what to do. You get on the Word of God. You acknowledge what He says about you. The anointing will show up on your, on your words. In Jesus' name, if you've got to get repentance out of your life, get repentance. Put your heart on the altar. Say, God, my life is on where it is. I am, I am mixed up, messed up, goofed up. Can you get real with God? Put your life on the altar. Say, God, I need you to help me with my life. I surrender my heart to you. That's a great place to start. But then you begin to confess in Jesus' mighty name, you acknowledge that I have the anointing. And this anointing destroys every yoke. It destroys every yoke. Every yoke. And a yoke is whatever. Confusion. Brokenness. Poverty. Whatever it is. Whatever the yoke. That anointing. That, with the word of the anointing, you've got to understand the tools we got. We can blow up any attack that the enemy sends your way. We got the tools. Jesus had the tools. He used the tools. He gives the same tools. The word and the anointing. The word and the anointing will destroy every work of hell. You can walk in victory through the word and the anointing. You can blast a hole through any wall. Don't live in the world of wondering. I wonder, I wonder, I, I, I wonder. No, 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 that's never of God. Wondering is not of God. Wondering. I wonder. Oh, I feel like God's just breaking things tonight. We find ourselves in different places in our lives. But God wants to buy the anointing. Break out in your life. Does that make sense? Yokes are coming off you in Jesus' name. Yokes are coming off you in the name of Jesus. Whew. Mm. Well, I feel his presence. I feel like the Holy Ghost says, sick him. Let's all stand to our feet. Baba Rusa Kiza, Baba Rusa Kada, Zikiola Kodo Zokodoya. 
Haza baranisi kota kota dizi kia la kaza kota koya. Haza maradizi ola kota zokodoya. Just say these words. Say, I am in him. And he's in me. I'm in Jesus. Jesus is in me. He's given me an anointing. The anointing is Jesus. But the anointing is the Holy Ghost. And I can know things by the power of the Holy Ghost. My spirit can know things. And by the knowledge of the Word of God, I can destroy every oak. And in Jesus' name, I come against all confusion in my life. And in Jesus' name, I command it to go. In Jesus' name, I am in Jesus. I am a new creation in Jesus. A new creation in His anointing. I am a child of God. God lives in me. God and His anointing lives in me. And He makes my way perfect. He shines my path with the light of His Word. Say these, I know what to do. God will show me what to do. I'm going to walk in the knowledge of the Word. I'm going to walk with the anointing of God on my life. And every yoke in my life is destroyed by the anointing tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I break this yoke in Jesus' name. And I'm going to walk free. I'm going to live free. And I'm going to live in this anointing. I'm going to walk in the anointing. I'm going to test things by the anointing. And I'll never be misled. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Everything you do in life, you test out with the anointing. Decisions you make, you wait on God. He will let you know. I promise you. It's such a place of strength. Such a place of peace where you say, no, God, I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost. I'm following the anointing of God. But you have to constantly affirm the positive, the Word of God. Because the negative is coming at you like machine gun bullets. You got to constantly affirm, nope. But what will happen is it will begin to build in you and build in you and build in you. And it will change how you react. And it will change how you act. It will change what you say. It will change how you think. It will change how you live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, we give you glory tonight. This is your word. It's your spirit. It's you, Jesus. We're nothing. You're everything. It's you. It's your anointing. It's your presence. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Wow, I feel his presence. It's just, it's just growing. That's like Sunday night. The more I linger, the more it grows. If you're sensitive to the anointing, you put your antennas up, you just, and you just grab it. You take it in. He comes to empower you. He comes to quicken you. He comes to undo things. He comes to strengthen you. He comes to put you on your game. He comes to make you the head and not the tail. He comes to put you over in life. He comes to take you out for the valley and put you on the mountaintop where you see more. You know where you're going. Well, I feel the presence of God. I feel like yokes are being destroyed even now. There are bondages of people breaking off right now. I feel like there's confusion lifting up people, particularly young people. Listen, 
The Spirit of God's doing the work. You will know what to do. You will yield to Him. He's going to speak to you. In the name of Jesus. Just as clear. You'll know. Some of you are asking, God, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about No, 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 calm down. You gotta say, listen, I am the sheep of his fold, and his sheep hear his voice. Say that. Say, I am a sheep of his fold, and I hear his voice. I am his sheep, and I hear his voice. That's what I'm gonna affirm. I'm gonna acknowledge that in Jesus' name. I hear his voice. I hear his voice. I hear his voice. I hear his voice. And the voice of another you will not hear. You'll hear his voice. You'll hear his voice. You'll hear his voice. You'll hear his voice. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, if you need prayer, we're going to open up the, the altar for prayer. But I tell you, God's done a lot in the Spirit tonight. A lot. His presence, I feel His presence right now. That's the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, I'm just respecting the Holy Spirit. Sometimes preachers need to shut up and be quiet. Get in the way of what God wants to do. But I just sense Him moving on you. Can you just take a minute, be quiet. Everybody, just be quiet. Let Him talk to you. Let the Holy Ghost talk to you about you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, sir. We honor you, mighty third person of the Trinity, Spirit of Christ that's here to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Thank you for direction. Thank you for encouragement. Thank you for your presence. As we leave here tonight, we want to just stay in the presence. We've been given the anointing of God. It's you, Holy Ghost. Some of you just need to say, God, I guess surrender. I give up. That's what he wants out of you. Just say, I give up. I don't figure it all out. Just between you and him, I surrender my life. Bring me out of where I am. Bring me where I need to go. Make your way plain for me. He'll answer that prayer. Just be honest with him, that's all. He'll, he, he's going to take you where you need to go. He's going to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. My, my, my. Holy Ghost. All right, if we need prayer, come. I have my pastors here. My Carolyn Moore, uh, John, Mary, Mark. I got everybody. Just come forward. I know. Just, just. Here's what we're gonna do. You can sit here. Let the Lord speak to you. But we're officially dismissed, and you can come and get prayer as well. God bless you. Have a supernatural week. Don't forget Friday night, and don't forget Sunday morning. <laughs>